All right, so well, let's talk about how to convert from Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates and vice versa. So what spherical coordinates are, uh, are basically a great way to represent a coordinate in three dimensions, right? Instead of using X, Y, and Z, uh, a lot of times it's more convenient to use uh, rho or R uh, in some cases, depending on where you look, uh, theta and phi. Now, in summary, Spherical coordinates are related to polar coordinates, um, but by the fact that it's just you just take polar coordinates and add a third dimension, and uh, that produces this second angle phi right here. So because they're so close, closely related, let's talk about um, what we discovered in um, the previous video. So we know that. Um, if you notice, right, this is the same r and theta from polar coordinates, and we're just adding the third dimension. So we know that r uh, times the sine theta is going to be equal to y. We know r times the cosine theta is going to be equal to x. And also, in this case, z, I know this is going to be a real big breakthrough, is going to be equal to z. Now, what does that mean? That means that um, basically the, the you can actually shift the plane up and still have the polar coordinates uh, defined. So so that's great. You know we, we have R defined, right? We know theta, but the problem is we need to know uh, rho and we need uh, phi. So let's take this triangle here. And expand it and see what we can uh, see what we can find here. So I'm just gonna flip this around here to make it look look like if I can learn how to draw a straight line, that would be great. Um, there we go. All right, right triangle. Now in this case, this is the angle phi. Right. This is rho. And the height for this triangle is r, right? The same r in polar coordinates. And this, right, the x on the bottom here, or what would normally be x, is uh, z. So using trigonometry and our trigon trigonometric functions, we can actually solve um, this angle as a function of the hypotenuse and the two legs. So let us do that. So let's see. Um, we know that the sine of phi, right, is going to be equal to, well, if you remember Sokotoa, right, opposite over the hypotenuse, right, r over rho. And we also know the fact that uh, rho squared is going to be equal to r squared plus z squared, right? And we can obviously solve for this and get rho is going to be equal to uh, the square root of r squared plus z squared, right? But the thing is, we know what r squared is, right? Because we know from polar coordinates that r squared is just x squared plus y squared, right? So that's just this. r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? This length here. So we just plug this in and we can find that uh, rho is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? So that's great. Now we know the length of rho in terms of x, y, and z. Perfect. Now we need to know uh, phi in terms of x, y, and z, right? So if we solve for r, we get the fact that, uh, let's do this in different color here. Let's get rid of this, give myself some room here. We know that if we solve for rho, obviously multiply rho by both sides, we know that r is going to be equal to rho sine theta, right? Excuse me, sine phi. There we go. Sine phi. And so, since we already know in polar coordinates, what r is, 
right, R is here. We can actually plug this R, which is the same R, into this equation and have everything defined as um, for X and Y. So let's do that, and we'll deal with Z in a second, right? So now we have, right, we plug this in here, and then we ultimately get uh, Y is going to be equal to R, which is just rho sine phi, and then sine theta, theta, not phi, right? X is going to be equal to, again, R, rho sine theta, rho sine phi, cosine theta, get my phi's and my theta screwed up, and what's Z? Well, we need to solve for Z here, right? So, we can use the fact that the cosine of phi is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So we know that, um, we know the fact that cosine phi is going to be equal to the adjacent angle here, in this case z, over the hypotenuse rho. And again, the same thing here, multiply rho by both sides and we get the fact that z is going to equal to rho times the cosine of phi, which is great. So that's just what z is, right? We don't just plug that in. And we get the fact that z is going to be equal to rho times the cosine of phi. Right, so now if you're given spherical coordinates, you can convert from spherical to Cartesian and vice versa using these three equations. All right, so I'll do a couple of examples in, a, in another video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again uh, in the next video.